You know, one of the things about living in California is the sun. <laughs> you just get a lot of sun in California. Having been born in Los Angeles, California, I guess you could say that I'm a Southern California, I'm a California sun. <laughs> one thing I learned about, kind of, all my years in working in ministry when we were doing lighting and sound and setting up stages and equipment. You know, there's lots of techniques you can use in order to diffuse the sun, change its direction, cause the lighting to work better. And then like a mechanic that works on his own car, <laughs> you see what you get when you're doing your own stuff at home. And such as it is, is the way it is. So when it's cold out, we'll put a coat on. When it's warm out, we'll take the coat off. But you adapt yourself to the circumstances and the situation that you're in. Kind of like the sunlight right now. Put on a few sunglasses, you know. Hey, we're fine. Because you see, God doesn't really care whether you're sitting there in Timbuktu or Mogadishu. And you have right now, you know, riots going on and upheaval in country that, you know, you don't know which faction is going to take over the world in your little world of it. Or that you're, you know, blessed and you're sitting in America, you know, spoiled rotten <laughs> on the internet enjoying Facebook or Twitter or going to work or doing whatever it is that you know, God has put you in that setting to do. Because be assured that wherever you are, God put you there. You may have started off doing it your way, but God meets you where you are. And then he tries to kind of turn you around, you know, if you're heading the wrong way and point you in the right direction. That's kind of what Jesus did when he came, was that people were getting so religious that they were no earthly good, I mean, to anyone, literally. They had made up all these rules and regulations, 633 mitzvahs that, you know, you do these and you do that and you do this and you do that, and it wasn't working. You see, nowadays, there's some people out there that kind of want to make you do those things. God didn't accept it then, and I don't think he's looking down and saying that he likes it so much now. Because whenever you're trying to fix something, you should probably leave it to the person who's the craftsman at it. You know, I know that I've had my own little projects that sometimes they look good. They don't stand up the test of time. <laughs> sometimes they're not that bad. But whenever the plumbing goes out, you know, I look for a plumber. Whenever the electrical goes out, I look for an electrician. I don't know too often that I look for a politician for politics, <laughs> but that's a whole other story. I don't worry so much about those things. I just say a prayer and then I don't go there and worry about it. To me, it's like, uh, they'll figure it out one way or another. But when it comes to life and death, you know, I figure, well, that's kind of a serious subject. That's a good time to take stock of, is there more to life than death? Is it just an end? I mean, what if maybe there is more to life than this physical body that I live in? I mean, you can tell me that it's all kind of nerve endings and kind of this gray matter up here and kind of like, you know, shoots off these electrical sparks in this chemical, you know, formula and somehow associative memories are connected with feelings and that somehow in some stored 
way of information, data retrieval. Your brain tells you that this electrical impulse that you feel makes you have this emotion. <laughs> and you can make a, a case, I guess, for the scientific methodology with which we examine how the body functions work with our emotions. <laughs> you could make a case for that. And you know, I've listened to those discussions. They're interesting in their own way. But you know, for me, I don't know, the Bible made a lot more sense than some of the scientific discussions of the chemical balances and how to influence them and to collate them and the id and the ego. I like to think that, you know, God created us and somehow he knows what's going on. Because if he didn't create us, <laughs> I don't really understand how we got here in the first place then. And because I'm not exactly a uh, youngster when it comes to studying things, or that I have been up the creek and over the hill and I've been around the bend, you know, and I've done things and learned things, I somehow don't find that any of the answers that are given me except outside of kind of God created us makes much sense to me. So when it came to the subject of life and death, then I kind of thought, well, you know, maybe God knows what he's talking about. Now, I don't know about all the religions, though I have investigated them. I studied them. You know, they all seem to make some sense. But so did science make some sense. But the only thing that made any sense for me was that God reacted and acted when I conversed with him, when I talked to him, when I tried to prove whether he existed or not. And when I went out of my way to do that, he proved himself to me. So, <laughs> I hate to say it, but sometimes you got to learn for yourself. Sometimes you got to discover for yourself, you know, what's true and what's not. And I think that if you choose to find out for yourself what's true, you're going to come to a conclusion, maybe the same as I did, that maybe what Jesus said is true. Maybe what God said is true. Maybe you can find out on your own. And maybe you'll read a Bible to do that. Maybe you'll watch a video to do that. Maybe you'll join some church or go through 75 different versions of religion <laughs> in order to come to your conclusion. But you see, when it's a serious enough subject like life and death, then it's got to be your conclusion. You're the one that has to make the decision. You have to find out that God is real. Because I can tell you, as obvious as the sun is on my face, for me personally, that's how real God is. But I know that because I've gone out of my way to do those things he said I should do in order to discover that God is real. Because I look over and I see a pigeon sitting on a chimney and I say, you know, that's a bird. <laughs> that's not a accumulation of, you know, cells that have subdivided and come together in some kind of conglomerate life being force that has some kind of magical or mystical power or some weird thing. I just look at it and say, it's a bird. <laughs> and God made a bird, so he called it a bird. <laughs> For me, that was pretty simple. In the beginning, God created a bird, and the bird was a bird. Hmm. I think that's why he gave me the word, you know, so the word of the bird of the bird. <laughs> You've heard that song. But for me, it's pretty simple. You know, I, I do what God says and he shows me more, you know. Maybe that'll work for you, that if you learn to do what he says, you'll discover what he says he means and it'll be true. If you discover what he says doesn't work for you, then don't believe in him. That's simple. Now. There may be religions to not believe in, or maybe churches, and you may have to kind of filter that out, you know, with 
taking off your glasses sometimes and putting on a different pair. But wherever it is that you go to study or to learn, when it's life and death, you know, you kind of want to take a long look at, you know, what God said, not necessarily what man says, and then follow what he shows you. And for me, I can only tell you that I've gone through the Bible and it works. <laughs> but Jesus said he did, and what he did, he proved to me. And if he were just dead and not alive, I would say to you, you're going to have to follow philosophy and make this life the best life you can live. But since I have faced death before, three times, you know, and no, I didn't go to heaven, experience stuff there. Or no, I didn't go to hell, experience stuff there. Not when I died. Once on the operating table when they kind of brought me back. That was no big deal. Lots of people do that in the surgeries. They just don't tell you. <laughs> but uh, the three times that I faced death, you know, it wasn't some great revelation for me. You know, I'd already pretty much determined that I was studying to find out if God was real. And I kind of already knew it by then. Those experiences just made me study more. The more I studied, the more I realized God not only is real, but he cared about me. And not only did he love me, but he proved himself. And he said he would and revealed himself because he promised he would. And because he did, there's nothing that can take my faith away. My faith isn't built on some preacher or some teacher. It's not built on just personal experience, but it's built on me sitting down and taking my experience and my knowledge and applying it together to become wisdom because you can't take something away that somebody knows to be true. Like you could tell me how that bird got here, but as far as I'm concerned, that bird got here by flying. And he just landed on that chimney and now he flew away. That's how he got here. So you can't confuse me on that one because what I see and what I touch and what I feel and what I understand with my own hands, what I've examined and proven, I know to be true for me. I don't put my faith in something I haven't proven and neither should you. Because you see, somebody may have come along and said, you know, you gotta have faith and you gotta do all these kind of like things you don't use your brain for, you know, but you use your emotions to. And I'm telling you, that's not true, you know. Maybe for them it works and maybe it's part of their religious expression, but God wants you to seek him and prove him that if he exists and he's real that you could interact with him. The same way that Abraham proved, the same way that Moses proved, the same way that each and every individual in the Bible, as well as living today and has lived, that has ever followed God, has had to prove that he is real. And then God did something wonderful for them. He proved not only he was real, but he proved that he was true, that he was reliable, that he could be trusted, and that he had something for that person. Some people call that a plan, you know, some people call that a purpose. Me personally, I call that living. <laughs> Just living the way that you were supposed to, you know, and experiencing kind of the good things that God's got and the tough things you got to go through and discovering that when it is a message of life and death, man, I'm not afraid of dying. It's this living part that's confusing to most people. I got to dying down because I know where I'm going. Maybe you don't, and you need to prove God. I hope you figure it out, because if you haven't, you know, your life probably isn't as happy as it could be, or you're probably struggling and a little miserable about some of the things that are happening in your economy, or your nation, or your little world you live in. For me, I just kind of get up every day, and I thank God for it. Look forward to the next day, and eternity with Him, and I get to read my Bible, and I get to go to church, and I get to sing and rejoice. I get to go out dancing like tonight. I get to do all kinds of things that I enjoy God with, because God is with me. Because when I asked Jesus to come into my life, like people had told me that you could do, the weird thing was, he did it even though I didn't believe it. And because he did, <laughs> Ain't nothing can take that away from me. So in living your life, 
in starting your day, <coughs> this devotional that we read, <coughs> forgiveness wins. For if you forgive men their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, leaving them and letting them go and giving up resentment, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. Matthew 6.14 That don't sound easy, does it? So, do I have to like it? <laughs> you mean, you tell me that those things that people do to me, you know, that aren't right, you know, kind of like when they go outright to deceive me and abuse me and miserably use me, you mean I gotta forgive them? Well, you know, God, that ain't so easy. But, hey, what? Since you're in me, and you said you'd help me, and you said you'd give me this Holy Spirit inside to kind of change me so that I could, could you make me into a person who could forgive? Because, you know, God, I really can't do it myself. But if you help me, maybe together we can accomplish that. But you're trying to teach me. You know, if you look at it that way, it's not so hard after all. Unforgiveness will ruin your day. If someone hurts you, pray quickly. Stop what you're doing and just say, God, I forgive them in Jesus' name. If your emotions feel strained when you see that person, stand firm in your decision to forgive them. Don't run away from them or hide or avoid eye contact. You know, that's kind of obvious. Isn't that the way you treat your in-laws and your relatives? <laughs> Because you haven't forgiven them of something that they did to you? <laughs> hey, maybe you could start with them and practice there. Then the stranger gets easier. <laughs> Funny thing is, is that the way I learned to forgive people was that I kind of read in the Bible a little farther on that a righteous man falls down seven times and rises up again and began to read about the human condition and how the heart is deceitful and wickedly made and perverse above all things and how people, as good as they try to be, are never that good. And that Jesus said one example in circumstance that all men are liars and the truth is not in them. And I kind of looked at that and I looked at men and I looked at people and I thought, you know what? He might have a handle on that. He said that man looks on the outward things but God looks on the heart. I began to figure out you know what? I don't really expect people to be kind and and all this loving stuff, so maybe I should forgive them because they can't help themselves. And for me, it made it a lot easier. Some people might call that a pessimist. <laughs> I kind of call it a realist. Frankly, the good that I see in someone, I give glory to God for. If they do something good for me, I thank God for it, you know, because I know it's God working in them, but when they do it, you know, I kind of like, uh, I'm not too sure about it, because, you know, Proverbs says, you know, be careful about when people compliment you, you know, and tell you flattering words, you know, because if you're like me, you might think, now, wait a minute, I don't look that good, and I'm not that smart, you know, and I don't have all the... <laughs> fan mail that you know some Hollywood movie star might have so why are you complimenting me but forgiving I think that's something that you and I can do even as you're forgiving me for being long winded now aren't you pray for them asking God to show you how to bless them ooh wait a minute that went one step That that hold on here God you want me to pray for them, for you to show me how to bless them. Can't I just forgive them and leave it at that? You mean I gotta actually bless them with something? Huh. That's gonna take some work, God, because you know me. Do whatever God leads you to do for them, and let God's love work through you to heal the rift between you. Now, God, I'm not really admitting that there was something smitten me that, you know, kind of put a rift between me and them. I'm only admitting that I need to forgive them, because 
That makes sense. But Blossom? You mean somebody like the president, you know, who's really kind of frustrated me and I got to bless him? I'm not so sure I know how to do that, God. <clears throat> I'm not sure I know how to. Oh, I get it. Because I don't know how, you're telling me how to do it. I see. If you do your part, God will bring your feelings in line with your decision and you will enjoy your day, your week, your month, your year, and your life. Because you see, it'd be real easy to hold a grudge, to be ticked off at the world, to, to be bitter. I'm pretty good at that, you know. I figured that one out when I was younger. But forgiving people and giving them an opportunity to see that you want to bless them, that just might give them something they don't understand. Something that lives inside you that they know darn well that you couldn't have done it. But because you forgave them, they're kind of shocked out of their shorts. You know, they're surprised that you'd forgive them for anything. Because the way you were isn't the way you are today. And you know what? I think that's what the message is all about. It's not you doing it, but it's God doing it in you.